So this is the biggest macro opportunity we've ever been given. Right, this is a wealth generating machine and people need that break. They need that opportunity to unfuck their future. And this is this is the big one. So, you know, it matters to me. We've all seen it. We've all fucked up in various ways in the past. And we were, yeah, as you know, and this, you know, this time around, we've got to get it right. We've got to get it right. You know, I, I think I will be very unhappy if we leave people behind. Now, I know it's going to be terrible at the top and people are going to be pointing fingers at each other. You know, we've gone through that too. But generally, if we can get people up this curve safely in the best way they can, we're going to change people's lives. And I think that really matters. Because I just want to go back on that one sec. I, I cannot believe that we've been given this opportunity. I mean, basically, all you have to do is buy Bitcoin down 80%, hold it, and it goes up 10x. I mean, it's like every four years like clockwork. I mean, it's bananas that we've been given this. It's like the, the morons trade. It's the easiest thing in the world. Recently, Roe Powell emphasized the significance of the upcoming Bitcoin halving, labeling it as the most significant event in Bitcoin's history. He believes that its potential impact is being underestimated by many in the industry. In addition to discussing the current crypto frenzy and its potential for generating wealth, Roe described the crypto market as a potent wealth-generating mechanism while advocating for active participation. However, he also cautioned against impulsive decision-making and overtrading, emphasizing the importance of risk management. Moreover, Roe highlighted the possibility of the market being in a bubble, advising investors to remain vigilant despite the uncertainty. Nevertheless, he remains optimistic about the opportunities presented by the crypto market. During a dive into his own crypto portfolio, Roe shared insights into his allocation strategy and favored assets. He concluded by teasing his macro thesis on Bitcoin's trajectory for the year 2024, encouraging viewers to stay tuned for further insights. Still sticking to that mantra, you know, which is don't fuck this up, which is really, you're only doing this with a small amount because it's fun. And I just do it to be involved. And, you know, fine, if you can get one that goes up a lot, it's a lot of fun to be had. And, you know, a lot of these are utterly worthless. And um, therefore, if you get them wrong, it doesn't matter either because you're doing it for the fun of it. Uh, and you might be careful not to be... going to the slot machines, right? That's what really you're doing. They're yeah, way ahead yeah. of you, my friend. They're way ahead. Yeah, a friend of mine who I won't name, who you know as well, you know, has been a professional trader his whole life, had taken leverage out in Solana, <clears throat> had a wick down. He lost two million bucks of his position. And it's like, come on, you know better. We, sh we shouldn't, we don't need to do this. The problem is, is again, at this point in the cycle, we all lose our minds. It's really hard not to. So you start thinking, well, Sol's probably only got an 8x to go and I want to make more money, right? And then you start doing dumb shit. And it, we, we've just got to not do that. And I know it's really hard, as you, as you rightly say, doing nothing is the superpower here. You know, this is not the last cycle. This is not the end of the world. Just, you know, this is a longer game to be played, but just do that. And then when you can, maybe at the end of the year, take a bit of money off the table, cash in a few lifestyle chips, you can then run the rest. And you can run it into a bear market. I ran the entire bear market on purpose because I wanted to add through it and just stay with it. Um, because you don't know how it's going to go. Is the next time around, is it going to go down 70% or is it going to go down 50%? You've no idea. Um, so the best thing is, is set your time horizon, take some lifestyle chips off the table at some point, and then you can take all the risk you want. Yeah, I've been thinking through this a lot and seeing this, it's a left translated cycle, which is a fancy term for saying it's going to be short and sweet. Um, I don't see any reason why that should be the case, why this whole liquidity cycle has changed. I mean, the governments aren't changing the debt maturity. Nothing seems to be changing. Therefore, I think the shifting probability is this ends up being a full bubble. That's Something right. like 2013, you even get that double pump, which is the hardest thing in the world to trade, right? You think it's over because it's done a massive move. It corrects 50% and then rockets up. What I don't know what it did, another 10x or something stupid in, in 2017. It, these markets are tricky. They're very tricky to deal with looking for tops. One thing I do know is, is people talk about, you know, 
uh, Coinbase being number one in the App Store. That doesn't make sense because they've already got 110 million accounts set up. It's the number of active accounts. I think you have to go to the Coinbase kind of quarterly statement and just see how many active accounts. Because at the low, I think they got down to about 9 million out of 110. You know, let's talk again when we're at 50 million active accounts and then we can say, you know, it's probably pretty frothy. Yeah, and also don't forget, Solana's gone up a lot with the massive selling of the FTX estate. Now, I know that both Pantera and Brevin Howard set up SPVs, special purpose vehicles, to buy this stuff. I haven't heard the progress, but the way Solana seems to be trading now, it feels that you're at the tail end of that and most of the supply has been taken off the market, uh, which allows it yeah, to run pretty getting... in. And if you look at Solana as well, of the top 10 most active traded tokens, eight of them are on Solana because <laughs> of the meme coin crazy. craze. The meme coin thing is not surprising and it follows a narrative arc. I did a film, it's on Netflix if anybody wants to look at it, called The New Americans Gaming a Revolution. And basically, it's about this whole thing. It started kind of with Occupy Wall Street and everybody thinking, well, what now? It morphs itself into GameStop, then the crypto craze, and now it's just gone straight into meme coins, which is like, nobody's even, even my Twitter, Pinned tweet is about this. It's like they don't want to play your game anymore. People are playing their own game and they know it's stupid. They know that these things have no intrinsic value apart from culture and culture is fleeting, yet they're going to do it. Yeah, I'm still probably a once a day at main holdings, but on the stupid stuff that I've got that are more frequent, I don't know why. It's, it's not even that meaningful, but it's just because it's the adrenaline, you're in the game. And it helps you with the patience game because the other stuff, you can't do anything. You just have to sit there, but you want to feel like you're involved. So all I'm doing now is trying to allocate capital as efficiently as possible. So I'm just looking at the, the cross pairs. So I'm looking at the Sol ETH cross. So I'm, I'm trying to be as effective as possible without going too far out the risk curve and having it all in dog with hat. This is the kind of classic dog season. Um, so, you know, it, it usually goes from this DeFi season, which we, we had, you know, a few months ago. Then the attention goes into meme season, and then it really goes into the kind of layer ones, layer twos, that kind of, that kind of stuff. I think you're probably right, and ETH as well. You know, there's yeah. everybody from the NFT cycle, everything else. You're right, I mean, it hasn't really affected retail yet. Yes, it's, it's got the DGEN crowd, those of us who are in the market and remained in the market, but we haven't sucked in. I mean, I'm not really getting messages from my friends. You know, no. the only thing I'm getting is, well, you should sell some of your positions soon. You know, I'm still getting some <laughs> concerned friend faces. Um, and I'm not really getting, hey, you know, what should I be doing here? And that phase is still to come. It's bizarrely quiet. Um, but also, don't forget, the economy is actually still not very strong. It's still pretty lackluster. And certainly on a global basis, it's not very strong. So people haven't got a lot of spending money either. So they're not throwing money around. It's just those of us have been in crypto because our economy is expanding. We've all got money to throw around. Outside in the normie economy, there's no money to throw around, I think. I think the everything everywhere all at once is going to be the feature of this cycle. And that will probably be the 2025 narrative. You know, we're kind of, we've got the early narratives, went to DeFi, into memes, blah, blah, blah. But I think we will see that. So I think that's interesting. And people are staking out different corners. Some people like deep in because it's a real world application. Other people like gaming because gaming's huge. And I think all of these things um, come together. The, one of the ones for me that's interesting still to, I think this is all to come because that's really not coming out until the summer. I mean, it's in testnet right now. I haven't heard anything about it. So it's super quiet. The biggest secular trend of our lifetimes is in front of your eyes, which is don't fuck up this crypto opportunity, right? This is crucial because we've never been given something like this. This is like an alien asset class. If you're, well, everybody watching this, it, was really happy. The other thing is technology. And it's not only technology investing, because crypto outperforms, but it's also understanding the changes that are coming from AI um, and how you can leverage that and what it means. I honestly think, and I, I go through it in the piece, I think we've basically got six years to try and make as much money as possible before the world becomes, and certainly the economy becomes incomprehensible to us because of 
the impact of AI robotics. We saw that figure plus open AI robot yesterday. I mean, holy shit. 